I cannot for the life of me understand why there is such a negative stigma around the concept of detachment. If I had chosen to invest my time and energy into things that were no longer serving me, then I would not be here right now talking to you. Hi, I'm Madeline and welcome to my channel. I'm glad you're tuned in. We're talking about detachment. Listen up, detaching yourself doesn't make you a cold-hearted, insensitive, careless person. Every person that I personally know who has mastered the skill of detachment are highly tapped into their emotions. As a matter of fact, these people do feel things on a very deep level. The difference is that no matter how much they may love a person or no matter how much they care about the outcome of a circumstance, they cannot cling to it. They accept that what is meant to happen will happen. They release the urge to control and releasing this urge of wanting to determine how every situation or every person treats you is an essential part of detachment. People who are detached don't set these unrealistically high expectations because if they do, they'll be extremely let down. It's important to have a positive outlook. I don't want you to think that detaching means voiding yourself of every human emotion you're capable of feeling, okay? Let's say you're applying for a job and you submit the application and then a week or two later you get an email from the company you applied to and they tell you that they decided to move forward with another candidate and you didn't get offered an interview. When you get that email, you aren't upset. Why? Because you remain detached from the minute you drop that resume into the files for the application and you press submit. When you are applying for it, you told yourself, I receive what the decision of this outcome is and I will not be emotionally harmed by it. And you progressed on. You kept putting your resume out there to different companies because you know eventually there is going to be a company out there that is going to want to have you on their team. They're going to be begging for you to join them and they're going to pay you what you deserve and they're going to treat you with respect and it's going to be amazing and it's going to be worth the wait. If you had chosen to react by sulking or feeling bad about yourself because you didn't get the job, you wouldn't be motivated to want to continue job hunting. Forget it. I'm done. I'm never going to find a job. No one wants to hire me. I'm not worthy. You know that negative voice in your head that wants to try and keep you in a state of misery? That is why detachment is so crucial. Regardless of what happens, you're not phased and you keep it pushing. Here's another scenario. Let's say you're in a relationship with someone and they cheat on you. Rather than being reactive, cussing them out, calling them every name in the book, getting angry, instead, you say this. I'm glad this was brought to light. The universe is always protecting me and I'm cutting them off and moving on because I deserve better and I'm going to find better. Point blank, period. You cannot take the way people treat you personally. You absolutely cannot. Because the way that they treat you is just a reflection of how they feel about themselves and they're projecting it onto you. Every time I allowed my emotions to interfere with my logic, it cost me. Because I'm the type of person where if you do some extra foul sh** to me, best believe I'm going to speak my mind. And this is something, to be honest with you all, I'm still working on this. I have gotten much better, but there are some moments where people really push me to my limit and I have to stand up for myself. I don't want you to get it twisted with what I'm saying that you have to just let people mistreat you and use you or hurt you in any way. All I'm saying is try to not let them see you sweat, not let them see you get overly emotional or out of your body, you know, where you just black out and you get so angry and you just spaz out on them. <laughs> like Detachment is really just about knowing to walk away and it's not worth your time to try and prove yourself to other people. 
I wanna keep it 100, okay? There was this guy that I was seeing for about two years off and on, and he went to another country to see a girl that he was talking to the entire time we were hanging out and spending quality time together. The dark, bitter, and angry side came out of me. I let my intuition guide me because I had a strange feeling. And as always, shout out to my intuition because it was on point. Found out what I needed to know. It sucked. It hurt. You feel betrayed. You feel like everything is a lie. If you've gone through a situation similar, then you know what I'm talking about. But I made a promise to myself that I would never let someone take me out of my character like that again. Because I definitely tweaked out on this guy. I was so fed up. I was so hurt and it was just like pent up in me for so long. And this situation was just the icing on the cake. But after I did that, I was like, damn, you know, I said some pretty mean shit to him, but he definitely deserved it. But also, what do I gain from doing that, you know? There's already so much evil energy in this world that why would I want to add to the bucket? I say all that to say this. You aren't doing yourself any favors by holding on to resentment, outrage, and all of those negative feelings. Please tell me one good reason why you would rather suffer in that way instead of accepting situations for what they are and walking away. What do you gain from that? I don't understand why people continue to subject themselves to agony. Sure, you're gonna learn a valuable lesson if you get hurt by a person or a situation, but there comes a point where you're just living the same experience over and over again. Are you Bozo the Clown? What are you doing? I want better for all of us. This is why I get so passionate about this. I've seen the consequences. I've experienced the consequences. I'm not perfect. Have you ever had a nightmare where you're running down a hallway and you feel immense fear and you're trying to get to the end of the hallway because there's a door and you can see the light at the end of the door and you know that if you get out of that hallway, you're not gonna feel that scared, helpless feeling, right? That is the equivalent to what it's like to cling on to people or situations. I enjoy maintaining a level of detachment. I give people the space to do what they wanna do so I can see what they'd rather do. There was this reel that I seen from the Hopeless Romantic Society account. You know what? I'm gonna play it for you all. You got any red flags? I am a Sag. So, oh yeah, oh, oh god, I'm key. scared. Okay, that's good. You should shake a little bit. Well, what do you think about Pisces men? I don't do Pisces. Would you talk to me? Duh. Oh, you said duh. I'm talking to you now. To so mom, you would fuck me mom. over, would you? Duh. Sometimes. Why? It's not fucking you over. It's giving you the opportunity to lead your life. But aren't I like the cutest? You are. Sometimes, but it's not fucking over. It's giving you the opportunity to lead your life. That's pretty true. Don't jump ahead here. I don't agree with the fucking you over part, but I do agree with the letting you lead your life sentiment. Because that's how I feel. I just let people do them. At the end of the day, how you move is on you. And how they move is on them. As long as I know that every day that I wake up, I'm keeping it real. I can't allow other people's behaviors to affect me. I just cannot. It's a no for me. I can love you and have strong feelings for you and still be detached from you. And it doesn't mean that I don't care about you. I just know that by remaining detached, I can enjoy inner peace and calmness. You know, I used to get attached to people that I dated, like really attached. And I would put all my trust into them, but eventually they would do something really horrible to break my trust. And I just realized that I can't keep doing that. I'm 29 years old. I'm almost 30. I don't have time to play stupid, silly games with people. We're not in elementary school. We're adults. Here's the thing. People are extremely talented at masking their true colors. But if they see that you're emotionally vulnerable and you're super kind, you're super caring, you're super generous, super nurturing, they will only use it to their advantage. 
how is it that being nice in this day and age is almost frowned upon? I'm not saying that you have to be this really mean, spiteful, unapproachable person, but I'm just saying to practice the skill of detachment. Try and master it. It's part of your personal growth. As you get older, you're gonna get better and better at practicing discernment. And you're gonna be able to know what type of people you gotta be detached from and what type of situations you gotta be detached from. It's kind of like an on and off switch, right? Use it in that way. It is only through detachment that we can recognize how much control that we have over our thoughts and emotions. Comment below if this video resonated with you in any way. I hope you enjoyed this and as always, much love to you all.